Good morning, friends. It's a snow day here in Colorado. Gigi's so excited to be home from school, and I'm so happy to be here with you. I decided to cozy up in my graduate gear. I did my doctorate at the University of Denver, and so I have so many fond memories. And today's going to be a geek out day for me, so I thought I'd get back in dissertation writing mode. As we geek out, I'm going to share with you a little bit of the science that's coming out of the fields of neurology, psychoneuro, and neuro, oh my goodness, psychoneuroimmunology, that was a new field for me that I didn't know existed, neuroendocrinology, and epigenetics. These fields have been coming together and put some interesting research before us that shows why community is so important, why thoughtfulness is so important. So yesterday we talked a little bit about how those are important leadership characteristics. They also make our lives more meaningful and fulfilling. And as I focus on what can I do to be an extraordinary patient, I realized this research was absolutely astounding to me. But first, I want to share another, I mean, unbelievable, the acts of kindness, compassion, thoughtfulness in the human spirit. So I want to flood the world with those stories because I just am blown away. So yesterday, a woman that I met at my workout studio came by. We've had several interactions, um, mostly through messages about kids and about life and about being alcohol-free and healthy and how a lot of the ailments that we're navigating with our health happen to be lifestyle choices. And so um, she drove all the way from the city yesterday to visit me, brought me a coffee, an oat milk latte, um, brought me fresh fruits so that we could be healthy together, these beautiful flowers, and I've got to show you this. You are just gonna, woo, this is like, say what? Look at this beautiful arrangement. She has, this is part of her company. It is called Designed Life Delivered. I hope I got that right, Lori. And each season, there's a whole bunch of really beautiful gifts. So this came with some napkins and napkin rings, a wonderful throw blanket, all of these, which I love the color scheme, are in this, um, I forget what my interior designer called it, it's like transitional, I think might be the word, where it can kind of combine some of the taupes and some of the um, whites and grays with the taupes and warm colors. Some really beautiful crocheted coasters. Look at it, this box is just loaded with goodies. A beautiful little um, olive wood board. My favorite was a note that says, you rock, and it's all shiny. And it was from her, not only her, but and her husband. How sweet. Just a little something to let you know we are thinking of you. I know it's not easy at all. And we, we are happy. H-O-P-Y. She was probably writing fast at that part. Some of, hoping, some of these gifts bring you comfort and peace. We are rooting for you every day. I mean, how can a girl get discouraged and down when this is what is in your life? So... I just hope that as you're thinking of people, you're learning to reach out, that that's really an important thing for us to do. I am not, uh, it's not easy for me to ask for help. And I had to learn in this journey that I'm gonna need to ask for help. I also had to put it into my head that how I do this matters. And so one of my favorite things in here, I love, I'm a big fan. I was kind of starting to think of things that I love. I love baseball caps, as you can tell. Um, some of that is because I haven't been able to wash my hair. I can't get soap in the affected surgery region. And so <laughs> another part of it is there's other things I'd rather be doing here in the country than my hair. I love Yeti mugs and waters, water bottles and then big chunky coffee mugs. And this is like a real deal coffee mug. It's so pretty. And my favorite part is that it came with this beautiful oregano flower tea. Lori spends a lot of thoughtful energy selecting products that are supporting other small businesses, supporting female-run businesses, supporting businesses that are doing good for the world. And so that really made my heart happy. Interestingly, a gentleman on Facebook reached out and shared with me how oregano oil can um, support healing through breast cancer. So I was like died of shock when I saw oregano flower tea. 
All these things that I used to think were just coincidental, now I know are part of a larger orchestrated plan that has got my back. So that's really exciting. Now we're gonna do some geeking out. So when you see me in my DU gear, we're gonna geek out. Just kidding, I pretty much geek out every day. So you can expect that from this channel. Um, let's talk about, this was a study done. The book is titled Mind to Matter, The Astonishing Reality of, how, or The Astonishing Science of How We Create Material Reality by Dawson Church. And in this segment, he talks about curing mice of cancer. So this was a professor of sociology at St. Joseph's College who has his PhD. Um, you'll notice my standard for geeking out is pretty high. I want double blind studies. I love meta-analysis. I'm not gonna be sharing with you just any old research, right? I want it to be vetted, tried and true. And so here we're looking at neurology, neuropsychoimmunology, and our epigenetic research, very science minded, because that's how I am. So they had this design, it was simple. Mice would be injected with mammary cancer, a procedure that had been used in scores of other studies. In cancer studies, tumors are induced in the mice, after which researchers try various chemicals to see if they will alter the course of the disease. The longest an injected mouse has ever survived was 27 days. After injection, the cancer tumors grow rapidly in the mice and they die in 14 to 27 days. Get this, that research was done in 1966. We've been studying this for a long time. And then this new study, in Kinsey's study, they divided these mice into random groups so that they would have a control group. The control group was kept in a different building to eliminate the possibility of healing effects due to proximity. So the mice arrived, they'd had a few different challenges getting the mice there. They didn't arrive on schedule, they'd had repeated delays, the researchers were getting a little bit frustrated and um, the mice arrived and were injected. Bill began to hold the cage of experimental mice in his hand for an hour each day. The photo in the book has like him just literally sitting with these mice in what looks like kind of a plastic see-through box um, every day. His hypothesis was that if healing energy were real, the mice would not develop tumors in the way they normally did. So they were looking at a normal tumor development and then the mice that had been injected, they wanted to see their tumor development when exposed to healing energy versus the control group. A week into the treatment, two of the mice developed visible tumors. So the researcher was very disappointed. When all five developed tumors, the researcher asked his assistant to put the mice out of their misery, stating that the experiment had clearly failed. Yet, when the assistant arrived, he commented on how healthy the researchers' mice appeared to be despite the tumors. They were running around their cages, full of energy, behaving as though they were healthy. Our behaviors are informed by our thoughts as humans, right? Mice don't have the same uh, neurological structure we do, but as humans, our behaviors determine the trajectory of our lives, and those start with our thoughts. Right? So we really have to monitor our thoughts, condition our thoughts. Some call that mindset. In high performance, we call it psychology, right? We look at the whole mind. The control mice in the other lab, he told Bill, Bill's the name of the researcher, weren't doing well. Two had already died. So notice Bill then got new information which changed his beliefs and perspectives about the quality of this study. Perhaps the treatments are slowing down the cancer even if they can't prevent it. There's no record of a single mouse living past day 27. Get one to live to day 28 and we'll have a world record. So the assistant's encouraging the researcher to keep going. Around day 17, much to everyone's surprise, the tumors on Bill's mice began to change. They became ulcerated, with scabs replacing the hair on their skin. By day 28, Bill confided to the mice that they were making history. The ulcerations began to disappear and the fur grew back. That is just amazing to me. A week later, Bill's mice were examined by a biologist. Notice, not a healer, not a hippie, not some you know, person that those of us who are a little more logic and science-based go, yeah, I don't know about that. I'll be honest with you, as an extraordinary patient, I'm trying all the things. I'm using the hippie versions of healing, the metaphysical versions of healing, 
the spiritual versions of healing. I am trying everything to ensure that I heal quickly and that I live cancer free for the rest of my life. So that's important. So this biologist relayed the news, the mice are cancer free. Absolutely amazing results. I'm trying to see if there was anything else I'd highlighted here. They did overall start to learn how to discern, how to cultivate healing energy in their hands. Um, that is just fascinating to me. So let's unpack that geek out. What that means is when we put healing thoughts into our daily lives, we can truly change the energetic frequencies that, we're, that our bodies are exposed to and responding to. You notice it right away when something high stress hits you, right? My ex was the king of lawsuits. And every time I would see an email from an attorney, my blood would boil, my armpits would sweat, my hands would even shake. It was so incredibly intimidating, especially as an educator who couldn't afford to go to battle. And I'm, I'm so grateful that things changed over time because I knew how my brain was wired. So I knew how to combat and rewire my own brain in those moments. And so some of those tools are in the Life Design Lab. Those are the tools we'll be talking about in Warrior Women Society. Not only for women, but we know that the leadership traits of the future are considered predominantly female or feminine traits. And we all, males and females, and those who identify as non-binary, we all have masculine and feminine traits within us that we can cultivate. So we're intentionally cultivating the traits of femininity that will bring greater compassion to the world, greater joy into our personal lives, and that will transform our families, our communities, the places we work. This I know for sure, my friends, when you bring the joy and when you are able to my dog's distracting me. When you bring the joy and you are able to truly um, live in that authentic space of how you were created, the brilliance within, it is kind. It is compassionate. When people act mean and nasty, that's just a reflection of their pain. So we need to bring that joy, shed the pain of the past, right? Let it go. I want you to draw a line in the sand. This is your line of saying from here on out, we're choosing positivity. We're, we're gonna be the extraordinary patient or we're gonna run our lives like a business. If you're facing a medical challenge right now, I've been talking to a lot of people who are, make yourself the extraordinary patient. That means you're gonna have to practice discipline. You're gonna have to think about what you're putting in your body because our bodies are responding to the things that we do. So with that, I invite you to go out and shine love and light into the world and practice some really great discipline and discernment right? Be disciplined and discerned with your choices. You will feel so good by doing that. I'm going to go out and see what this dog is barking at. He's been having a darn good time playing out in the snow for the last 15 minutes. Love you friends. Have a wonderful day. Mwah!